morning and welcome to Lethem St Mark's Church. Welcome our friends from Bankfoot, Stanley and Lunkerty and from other places as well to join us on this Sunday morning where we'll be thinking about the fruit of the Spirit and also about goodness as one of the fruits of the Spirit. But of course also today is Remembrance Sunday and that's been quite difficult because we've not been able to gather in our usual way, we've not been able to remember as a group, as congregations, those who have given their lives in the ultimate sacrifice for freedom here and around the world. But just as we begin, I think it would be helpful if we had a moment of silence. I don't think it's a minute or two minutes that really counts. It's the fact that we do it and we still ourselves and we remember. And so at the going down of the sun and in the evening, we will remember them. Let us worship God as the prayed band lead us in our first song. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And our second reading is from Galatians 
chapter 5, verses 22 to 26. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the sinful nature with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking and envying each other. This ends our reading and may God bless his holy word. Let us pray. 
Dear loving Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are King of Kings and Lord of Lords and that you are able to do more than we can ever ask or hope for. We thank you for the image in the Psalms of a God who is good and who cares for us as a shepherd cares for his sheep and who in Jesus shows his love in dying for us. Forgive us, Father, when we doubt your goodness and love, especially when things are hard like just now. We pray for the Queen and members of the Royal Family, for our leaders, both at Westminster and Holyrood. Give them wisdom and help them to lead with truth and justice. We pray for those whose lives have been devastated by war. And this weekend especially, we pray for the armed forces. We remember those who have suffered loss of loved ones, health and mental stability. In your mercy, Father, draw near to them and heal their wounds and let them know your peace which the world cannot give nor take away. We pray for our church. Be with Jim and Neil and Andrea and the leaders. Keep them close to yourself as they seek your will in these troubled times. Be with our older folk, dreading the coming winter and what it might bring. Be with those whose jobs are at risk and who are worried about finance and how to build, pay the bills. Be with our young folk as they try to make sense of things. Keep them trusting in you and looking to you to guide them. And be with our children and keep them safe. We pray for the Gordon family as they go back out this weekend to Uganda. May they settle into their home quickly and get back into a routine. And Father, we just pray very specially for our NHS, be with our doctors and nurses and ancillary staff. Support them, may they know your presence. May you give them wisdom May you give them strength. May you just be near them in all that they do. In your name. Amen. Hello and welcome back as we are thinking about the fruit of the Spirit and about goodness. You know, the word goodness, it, again, it's, it's one of these words that needs a little bit of rehabilitation because it's seen as quite a soft word, quite a flimsy word and something that's quite weak and something that doesn't really isn't really aspirational for people's lives. It, it tends to kind of hang there and use sometimes as a kind of derogatory term of someone who's all goody goody and you know sometimes Christians and church people are, are lumped into that into that kind of category and it's seen as though all we're out to do is be goody goodies and as though life is devoid of all fun, reality and excitement, which of course is not the case. And so when it's listed in Galatians chapter five as one of the fruit of the spirit, again we, we remember that this is part of God's character. And, you know, part of the role of, obviously, every Christian community is to reflect God's character back to the world. And part of that, of course, is also for our military chaplains around the world um, who are embedded often, whether it's with the Navy, the Royal Navy, uh, the Royal Air Force, or whether that's with the Army and its various branches and regiments, um, again, around the UK and around the world. And these men and women are there to embody this, the very character of God as well, even in some of the most difficult and challenging and trying of circumstances. You know, on, on board a ship, a submarine, you know, detached with, with a regiment that's on tour in Afghanistan or Iraq or the different parts of the world, or whether they're in base working with families. But they're there to embody that. And it almost seems like a contradiction, doesn't it, to think about the goodness of God in these situations. 
But you know, part of the whole dynamic of being a chaplain is literally like Jesus was embedded with us. The word became flesh and was embedded into humanity. And that's the way that the chaplains work. And I personally have a great respect for those who are full-time and also part-time with the territorials working around the world with our men and women in the different services. Because these men and women, most of them are young, they have their own fears, their own issues that they have to deal with. And often the chaplain, whether the, the young folk, whether the soldiers, the sailors, or the airmen, airwomen, whether they are you know, religious or not, in their own words, the chaplain is often seen as a go-to person, someone who would offer a listening ear, some wise counsel, and to help them practically and in other ways as well. And also to share with them, the spiritual message of the gospel, which is the hope for everyone. I once heard a chaplain say there's no such thing um, as, a, as an atheist on the battlefield. And, and I don't know whether that's completely true, but I get his meaning. And, you know, it does have a great ring of truth to it, doesn't it? To know that, you know, every person would, would seek God in these very, very, very trying circumstances. So right across the board, whatever the Christian message is preached, is lived out, goodness is always part of that, reflecting back to the world, the goodness of God. And I guess in a helpful way, the word good then is, is sometimes used to describe someone, isn't it? That's a good person. That's a good person. You know, that's a nice woman, a good woman, a good man, good boy, good girl, good young person. Someone who seems to allow their love and care for others to, to go through, someone who shares their life, and someone whose life seems to be easily and comfortably and helpfully have that sort of a label attached to it, that they're a good person. And that is a, is a wonderful thing. And, you know, Christians in that sense, too, are to seek that. But I don't know about you, that's very difficult to do at times. It's not easy because that idea of goodness has different meanings. You know, in a secular way, it may mean one thing, but in a, in a faith-based way, it may mean something else. So to be a good person in the world may mean, you know, that you, you follow this set of values, but in a Christian sense, you may have to follow different values and to be really uh, reliant and faithful to God and his commandments in that sense. And following Jesus that way is not easy, but it is what we are called to do. And so that definition of goodness may well be quite different. In Psalm 23, which of course was written by a warrior, by a, by a warrior king, King David, we have that idea of God's character against coming through in that very powerful and poetic way where God is described as a shepherd. And the character of the shepherd is that surely goodness and love or goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. So there's something in there, isn't there, that as we follow Jesus... In a way, goodness is not something to strive for, but it's something that happens as we follow Jesus, as we literally practice our faith in that sense, put it into a working position and not just some sort of a thought process, something that's willing to get its hands dirty rather than just sit back and imagine what we should do in any given situation. Again, back to that idea of when we pray, you know, for that opportunity you know, to, to, to be faithful, then we will get that opportunity to be faithful, to, to look for hope, then to get hope. But it will always be done in a given situation and not something that's simply written in a book by someone that we are to imagine how we would cope with that. But we get our hands dirty and we, we don't hide away from the world, but we engage with the world. We are the salt and the light in the world, as Jesus said, that we are. And in doing that, again, we are demonstrating God's love to it. And that is worship, friends. That is what worship is. Worship is about giving our bodies as a living sacrifice. It is about engaging, not just in singing of songs or in the repetition of prayers or even the reading of scripture. Yes, these things are important and they are there. They are to feed our souls. But worship is also about how we live our lives. We dedicate our lives to God on a daily basis as an act of worship. And what delights God most of all? It's not offerings, as it says in Psalm 151, in Psalm 51 rather. It's not offerings. You know, it's not things that we give, but it's our hearts and our lives in faithful service to God. That outpouring of our lives as an act of service and also an act of worship in serving God in that way. We get such a blessing out of doing that. And yet God takes it as the highest form of worship into his own heart. And we're created to do that in that relationship and following Jesus, to give ourselves in worship. 
and God's goodness then comes from us. And it becomes something that, that, that is a very positive thing. People see that. People respond to that goodness because the opposite of goodness, of course, is badness. We don't need to look far to see examples of badness, you know, not just bad behaviour, but people who do some seriously wrong, bad things, make terrible decisions with huge consequences for others. And that's people, you know, right up in the middle of in, in an election and all around that in America, right down to people with individual choices in their homes or places of work or their schools. That idea that, you know, what we do is so important and how we live our lives is vitally important as well. To allow goodness to enter into the situation by us living out our Christian faith. It savours it. It brings that seasoning into other people's lives and into our own lives as well. It raises things up rather than always sees them knocked down. It builds people up instead of knocking people's confidence. It makes an investment in others by saying there is another way to live. A more satisfying way to live. And you know, if this is resonating with you, but you're thinking, oh, it's been a while then it's time to just step back, put our phones away, turn off the social media, go for a little fasting from these things because our brains might just not be wired up in, the, in a proper way at the moment to hear the Spirit of God whisper warm words of love into our hearts and to focus upon God, upon Jesus, upon his word, to let that message come back to us. And allow God's goodness to fall upon us and ooze from us as well. You know, the Bible talks these things about being seasons of being dry, of being parched, of being far from God. All of these are good illustrations of it. But we, God's idea is to drench us in his love by his spirit. And then that drenching, of course, waters every aspect of our souls, our bodies, our minds in that spiritual sense. And then it begins to overflow. We don't keep it to ourselves. And part of that overflow is the goodness of God. God's goodness in a situation. You know, I love telling this story. And please forgive me. It's one of my favourite stories. I've probably told it a dozen times at Lethem. But, but there's something in this story that's, that's very powerful about the wee boy who watched the, the, the guy buying lots of cakes. It was during the Second World War at the end. And this person was just going in buying cakes. It was during rationing and everything else. And... Um, and the wee boy watched with his kind of snottery nose and his, his eyes kind of coming down with just, just desperation to get one of these cakes. And this American soldier had many cakes. And he saw the wee boy, he went outside. And he was so moved by the wee boy that he just gave all of them to him. He just says, take them all. And he turned around and said, Mister, are you God? Are you God? Because he had caught something of the essence of God's goodness, which is that he gives out of God's goodness, he gives. He gives of himself. And we are to reflect that. What are we holding in our possession that we can give that can be an act of utter godness and goodness to bless others? But, you know, I want to just step back from that for a moment and think because in that sense, there's, there, there, there's some rules around that. There's rules around how we do it and also why we do it. So when we look at Matthew chapter 6 and Jesus looks at the, the Pharisees and how they gave, they did it with such a demonstration. Jesus says, no, your left hand shouldn't know what your right hand is doing because it's an act of worship. This goodness that you are bringing into someone's life is an act of worship between you and God. And the hardest part is, is that you don't brag about it, you don't talk about it, you don't tell anyone about it, but you do it as a supreme act of worship that is the goodness of God at work. Boy, that's hard. You know, we must never confuse, you know, building each other up with bragging. You know, the other way is, is of course, the case in, in, in the church at times. We, we don't build people up because we think it's bragging when it's not. Encouragement is so important. But you know, there are times that when we do it, and how we do it and why we do it, we do it quietly out of respect for the person. It's not about brownie points with God or with the person. It is about doing it in such a way that we can lay our head in the pillow at night and say, Father, that is my act of worship to you for today or one of the acts of worship. And I want your goodness to flow into that person's life because you have so blessed me 
And we're not talking about people with abundant wealth or possessions. We are talking sometimes about acts of kindness, acts of goodness, about flavouring someone's life by quietly honouring them, not embarrassing them either by, by forcing something upon them, but in a humble spirit, sharing the goodness of God with others. God is good. Let's sing and shout it, as the song says. Or as we sang at our first service on Wednesday. How, did, how well did that go? And I hope that some of you will come along to the Wednesday evenings as we go along. We, we, we shared in the first song, God is good. God is so good. It's in his character, it's his nature. And he shares that with us and we share that with others in acts of kindness, acts of love that are good and for the glory and the honour of God. There is no greater feeling there is no greater act of worship than of serving God in action with a humble heart to bless others that only you and God and maybe the other person or people know, but you leave it at that. And here's the thing, I can't give you any examples of that because if I did, I would completely negate the point. It is between us and God. And so friends, let the goodness of God wash over you today. Go and serve him with acts of kindness and goodness and put it and seal it in your own heart. Some of the acts of kindness and goodness that we think about at remembrance are the acts of sacrifice. Yes, there are many rewarded, rightfully so, with medals and mentions and dispatches and various things like that. But for everyone that's honoured, there's probably a thousand that aren't. For people have done such kind and wonderful acts and that goodness of God has worked through people on battlefields and field hospitals in chaplains offices long after the battle has gone so friends let's have a moment now where we stop ourselves and thank God for his goodness and to think of those who need God's goodness on this remembrance Sunday let us pray our heavenly father we come before you and we thank you for your goodness. God is good. His love endures forever. Through Jesus, we know that that goodness is real and not made up or pretentious or pretend. It is real. May we share that in acts of kindness and goodness with others to the glory of your name. We pray for our armed services, uh, the personnel involved at every different level, that you would bless them and help them and their families too. Times of separation, times of worry and anxiety. Lord, may they be met with acts of kindness and goodness to know that you are good, so good to them, even as they struggle with whatever it is that's on their and in their lives at this time. For those men and women who struggle long after the battle is gone with PTSD, who find it difficult to fit back into civilian life, Lord, remember them, we pray. And Lord, we pray for peace. We pray for the day when all the weapons of war will be needed no more and the Prince of Peace will come. And it won't simply be the absence of war, but it will be your presence that brings the everlasting peace to the world through Jesus who gave his life that all may live through faith in him. And so, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Amen. Friends, bless you and I hope to see you at the cafe maybe Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday or at the Wednesday service. Look up the Facebook page or the web page to book a seat in advance and if you're not then that's okay. There's no pressure to come back. It's there if and when you need it. Take care and God bless. <laughs>